if you want to hear two guys that won't freeze up on the mic, go to YouTube and search out NTT FGPOD. Hit that subscribe button and like the videos. I'm Rock. And I'm Archie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but... It's a podcast. Immature, crass, trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Hey, Rock. Yo. Did you know that we have a YouTube? We do. A YouTube. Tell me more. Oh, well, everyone out there, go to YouTube at NTTFGPOD and check us out. Hit the button. Subscribe. We have really cool people coming on. I mean, look at his face. Look, look at that face. Look at this face. Give us a like hit that button and uh the content that we'd be putting out is just gonna be slamming and bigger and better also on our youtube we got some cool stuff we got stuff like uh rocco made an italian sandwich that was uh tits as the kids say um really was. that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun to make um we're gonna be coming out with some other content very shortly so hit that subscribe button and check out our shorts check out and our pants and our if i had 100 million dollars <laughs> and i would bet that you were gonna pull a willy right on that line <laughs> you know me pal you know me homie um but yes subscribe go to nttfgpod on youtube and uh like us also we have a not these two fucking guys podcast playlist on Spotify rock. Did you know? I did. I came up with it. Half of it at least. <laughs> so Rocco and I uh, put our little nuggets together and our heads and we came up with our favorite, oh. favorite metal rock songs. Put them together. But we got to go. We got to go the other way, rock. No, you can get the other way. Steve. Not nah, other way. <laughs> that no, keep going, keep going, <laughs> keep going. I, 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 I'm gonna touch it. I'm gonna touch it, and go more. <laughs> and this is why he's a fucking J. <laughs> oh, oh no! All right, so um, what do we got? Our playlist. Not these two fucking guys. Rock metal playlist. Check it out. Over a hundred rock and metal songs by Don't our get you going by our favorite bands. Rock, name a band. Forty and, below. We just talked about them. Fuck, it's not on here. Yeah, they rope. What's up? Oh yeah, right. All right, you ready? Down. It's on there. Bury me in smoke. A day to remember. Yeah, it's on there. <laughs> the use. Yes, it's Guess on what? There. Wow. Uh, by the way, I put on uh, Decode by Paramore, oh. one of my favorite fucking songs. I think that was on the Twilight soundtrack. I never saw the movie, but I that was good. Um, anyway, if you're on Spotify, not these two fucking guys playlist, rock, metal, check us out. Give us a like and put it on when you're at the gym. When you're fighting with your girl or your man, depending on your preference, driving to work, driving to work at the gym, fucking, you know, it'll get you going. Hey, Rock. Yo. So, how's your summer going so far? Oh, uh, so far, so good. And yourself? Uh, it's going well, but it's going fast. It always does. And when the summer ends, what begins? Football. Football season. Little, little something, something in Giants camp. Um, 
I, I, I want you to explain something to me. I'm not really too up on this. Um, so as of yesterday or today, depending on when you're listening to this, um, we signed Saquon Bar- Barkley. We we got him to a one year, eleven million. Was it eleven? I think it, yeah, one year, one eleven million, one year. Yeah, you got a little signing bonus. Okay. So basically, they were going to put the franchise tag on him, which basically they would they would keep him under control for that year, right? And that he would get paid like what the market value is for like what they deem for a running back. So. Well, what does that mean? Like that under under that, control. What is under like keep him under control? It mean it means his contract. It means his contract was out. They had the option to put a franchise tag on him, keep him for another year, but pay him, you know, the 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 market value of what he's worth for his years in and and uh you know level of player like that kind of thing. But say he say say he was like, I I don't fucking like it here. Then then he then he can. He could sit out the season, not get paid, and then go sign with somebody next year. Which is brutal in, in football, sitting out sure. a season. Because, well, I mean, he's a running back, and, and the lifespan of running backs now, career span is like three and a half years. Right? And he's entering his fourth or fifth year, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, he had a great year last year, but now the problem is is, is they're, they're devaluing the position of running back, where you know the league is built around quarterbacks. Obviously, but, but they're yeah. sitting, you know, they're they're going the 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 Bill Belichick method. The whole uh, NFL seems to have adopted it, where they're not paying big money for running backs because of the lack of longevity. Right, they're building it around quarterbacks, and I, I get it. That being said, I love Saquon Barkley. I think he's like a generational talent. I think he'll be the exception to the rule. The big the thing on him was if he can stay healthy. Well, and that's a, that's and that's always the the can you be healthy? Can you stay healthy? And also um, the the one thing to his advantage as a running back, he can catch. Yes, so. he's versatile. Yes, he's versatile. He has a he has that that hard nose style though, right? But but he um, you know they are, you know this year, next year, year after they're building the team around Daniel Jones. And I know people will say, "Oh, Daniel Jones, he had one, you know, half decent year." I don't know. I think I think he showed a lot last year. You know, responded to a new coach, uh, Dable, new GM. I think that the Giants showed me enough where I'm a believer of it wasn't a fluke year. It's thing, and it, it's it's what the right coaching can do for a team. Do you? And I think, I, and I think obviously the team is better with Saquon Barkley. Do you agree or disagree with the rule? How long has this been even in the NFL? Am I that stupid? Franchise tag? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't it sound like, like, it, it, like, like, like you, you, you're blocking the girl from leaving your bedroom. Yeah, essentially, <laughs> it's like, like, <laughs> like. I mean, that, you you can't. That sounds a little that. <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Now like, you just can't. Leave. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't it sound fucked up to you? Like, like to me, it sounds like. Bro, you're 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 actually forcing me. I can't leave. So so that, so that means I have to sit out a year. If I like, say, if I fucking hated you, or I hate the team, right, right. I have to sit out a year and not play. And then it's not about the practice. But, well, on the franchise side, you're getting pretty I, much top dollar. It's all. It's not like it's not like they're, they're keeping you and paying you like shit. Now this just to, I guess just to make the the you know sweeten the pot for him. They gave him a, a signing bonus and something else where so he's gonna make a million dollars more or so more or less than he would have on the franchise tag. Now what happens next year? I mean, we don't know, but I'm saying like what all right, so no, no. He, he, so he's willing to bet on himself right now, right? They signed a deal for one year, eleven million, whatever it is. So he's willing to bet on himself, not you know, maybe the Giants didn't want to give him a multi year deal, which I understand that that, you know. It, it, it's it's weird to say at, at his age. Meanwhile, he's only been in the league four years. You know what I mean? But that that's yeah. the life of, of a running back. He's willing to better himself, have a big year, and get, and get a big contract. And hopefully, for his sake, it's with the Giants. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, so, yeah. he's the best running back that the Giants have had in twenty years. I'm sorry, like you know. I mean, he's no Gerard no, Bunch. No, no disrespect to uh, <laughs> Tiki Barber. I would have rather had. 
Barkley than Barber. Just my my opinion. I'm more of an Otis Anderson type. OJ Anderson, yeah. Remember him? Yeah, he was good. He's a beast. The Bloomfield Fireman played the New York Giants or whoever wanted to show up from the Giants that night at Pulaski Park in Bloomfield in 1990-something. And I was a little kid, and I went there, and I was standing next to Gerard Bunch. So if for any of you out there, he was, uh, I think, a fullback for, for the New York Giants. Pepper Johnson was there, played center field. Some guy hit a fucking frozen rope to Pepper Johnson. He fucking tried to catch it, fell backwards. Not a not a sport. <laughs> not a sport. Um, but I was standing next to Gerard Bunch, and I remember being like, I think I was probably like 12, 13, and I was coming, you know, little boy, yeah, coming a little beard, full, full beard. <laughs> I was I, 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 I was receding a little bit, uh, <laughs> and uh, I remember no homo looking at his thighs. Because he had shorts that were so fucking short, but then he had the spandex underneath, you know? I have never seen thighs <laughs> that big <laughs> on a fucking human in my life. Like, I could only imagine him There's squatting. I'm oh, sorry. Well, that that's snake now. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine, like, him just fucking squatting 425 just, just to fucking get reps in and to enjoy. Like, like... I've never seen like his thighs were like this big. But if you look at Saquon Barkley, his fucking legs are humongous. But you got to be yeah. for a running back, bro, right? To take hits from he, and Saquon like trains like boxing too. Like he's 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 fucking he's a real deal, man. He's he's I don't know. I love Saquon. I love and so I couldn't be happier that they resigned him. And uh, I yeah. think the Junkers are going to surprise some people this year. Yeah, rock. Yo. One of the most classic, classic scenes in a movie is when, rest in peace, Ray Liotta, a.k.a. Henry Hill, Henry. is walking into the club. And, or, or uh, yeah, I think he's walking into the club and, and he's pretty much um, introducing all his gang members, all his friends, you know, Go get the papers. Get the papers, Tommy. Two times. Time. Fucking and and then there was this Eden one. Blair. But it, do Man, you, Eden, brother. But do you remember right as he's walking in? See, I'm confusing the scene when he walks in with a uh, with Karen. Um, basically, basically, you're trying to tell me you don't know what the fuck you're talking. Yeah. About. No, but when in the, when he's but when he's introducing all all his uh all the mob all his characters yeah. all the guys. The background song. Rags to Riches by Tony Bennett. You know the rags to riches. Like, that just makes me, like, like that couldn't have, there couldn't have been a more perfect fucking song. Yeah. That scene. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, God. Rest in peace, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett was an angel. Angel, I'll tell you Right, and he came up. He, he, he you know, I, I never like. I guess in showbiz, having an Italian name wasn't advantageous back then. That's right. That's not his real name. I think it Di was a uh, Di Benedetto. Right? Yeah, I had to change it. You, they, they, everyone chopped the fucking vowel off the end because it wasn't accepted. That's right. That's right. Holy shit! You're right. He was the he he was like the last of of like those uh classic like cabaret fucking yeah yeah rat packish fucking and blown crooners what and what you hear from stars from musicians today they said that like in his eighties I mean he was ninety six when he just recently passed but his voice. Was strong yeah. and top notch. Yeah, like, <clears throat> like, like when you performed with Tony Bennett, you were performing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he an icon, fucking icon, one of the last of the crooners. Um, great, great full head head of fake hair. 
Well, it's a fake Twitter thing, is it? Get the fuck out of here. Well, it's how do you know? <clears throat> it wouldn't. Are y'all choked up? Because he would sing and his <clears throat> and his eyebrows would move, but his hair wouldn't. <clears throat> no. Uh, Tony, too. Yeah, like left my heart in San Francisco, rags to riches. Um, the album he did with fucking Lady Gaga, like that was like his last like iconic, like because that's a big album. A lot of people like that yeah, album. You had the Lady, <clears throat> Lady Gaga. <laughs> so, uh, God, I love Rags to Riches. It's such a great fucking song. Uh, rest in peace, Tony Bennett. And uh, we want to give a, another shout out. Um. Let's be honest. Ahead of her time. Yeah. Ripping up a, a picture of the Pope in 92. Ahead of her time. On Saturday Night Live. Trying to trying to prevent child abuse. Yeah. In the, uh, here we go. If I say something stupid. In the Vatican? In the Vatican, yeah. Yeah, yes. People didn't take it that way at the <clears> time. <throat> no. Oh. Wow. In 1992... We watched on Saturday Night Live Sinead O'Connor and her her performance, and we say say something. I don't remember the lines, but you know, we need to stop this now. And went on camera and ripped up a picture of the Pope. That's fucking crazy. Because like nowadays, that's that's like you know brave, and that's you know, yeah, um, almost normal. To be honest with you, you know, just the, you know. But in 92, you got to understand the time and place. <clears throat> that shit wasn't, you know, like that was headlines on the fucking paper. And they were, they were, they were cursing her out, boy. But, uh, yeah, um, rest in peace to Sinead O'Connor. Wonderful voice. Um, he, uh, she got so much fucking backlash for that. Yeah. And you remember, I don't know if it was the next season, when Joe Pesci hosts it, and he ripped up a picture of Sinead O'Connor. Did he really? Uh, I don't think anybody knew what she was, like, what it was about, what, you know, what she was trying to fight. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody out there, if you know, one of our biggest hits happened to be a cover. Uh, Prince, yeah. nothing, nothing compares to you. But she did a beautiful version. With that being said, Chris Cornell did a great version. Yeah, I mean, let's not be honest. Like Chris Cornell could sing anything. Yeah, but there's a couple songs that are really good. If you people out there don't know Sinead O'Connor, listen to "Nothing Compares to You." Drink before the war, uh, Mandinka. That's a good song. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but she does a cover of Nirvana's "All Apologies." That's very, really? very good. Very, Never very heard. good. Yes, very good. Um, Weird. I almost like I hear it. I hear it right now. Uh, you know, fix that post production. It's magically going to appear. <laughs> in, in editing, it's magically going to be there. I'm all. I'm. I'm like this. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> but uh, I know she had some mental issues or mental trouble, and I think no, her, her doesn't. I think her son passed away not too long ago. Yeah, he's only fifty-six years old. Yeah, man. It, yeah, and you would think, at least from our eyes, I think she'd be like a little older, right? Eh, maybe, yeah, maybe not. I, I, I was actually surprised. I thought she'd be a little older, but sixty-one. Yeah, you know. But rest in peace, Sinead O'Connor. Uh, you will be missed. Your voice, you know. Iconic fucking shaved head too. Yeah, everybody knew it was, you know. Icon yeah. yeah, I can guarantee people were her for Halloween. Definitely, definitely. Uh, or Sigourney yeah. Weaver from Alien. <laughs> Yo, Rock. Yo. Tonight. We have a guest that solidified his place on 
guitarists who will melt your fucking face off. Right. Not, not only can he shred with the best of them, but when he combines a wide range of styles like hard rock, metal, jazz, classical, and flamenco guitar, the palatable versatility is second to none. Born and bred from the great state of New Jersey, welcome to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast, Mark Rizzo. What's up, brother? What's up, guys? How are you? Thanks for having me. What's uh, up? Man? We appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. You're looking good, bro. I see fucking some kettlebells on online. You're fucking, you're looking good. Yeah, well, you know, trying to uh, stay young. <laughs> Not young, but I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, man. For, I'm, I'm 44 and I'm fucking feeling everything. Yeah, I try Zumba. I do Zumba like every uh, five times a week. No, I'm joking. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, where, what do you do at the gym? Like Zumba, man. I do Zumba. It's a I seat. do Zumba. I, I got this dance class, you know. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, first off, thank you so much for giving us the time. And how are you? Good, man. I'm home for a little bit right now. Um, we finished the El Nino tour about a month ago, so I've been home for about a month, and I'm leaving uh, Friday to do a solo tour out on the West Coast, so it should be fun. Very cool. I mean, we have to ask, how does it feel to be back? It's great, man. You know, it's a, it's a new vibe to the band, new singer, um, mm -hmm. it's stuff. You know, uh, it's just all around just like a completely different band, and, and I'm loving it, man, having a great time. That's awesome. I mean, it must have, you know, I'm sure the uh, the crowds and the fans are definitely looking at you on stage and are like, yeah, you fuck, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it was you definitely know? a real great vibe, you know, with the fans, man, and and yeah. uh, been very accepting, you know, with me coming back. And, and uh, so it's been awesome, man. I mean, it's like getting Ken Griffey back to your team. You're like, yo, what the <laughs> fuck? He's back. <laughs> Bring him in. Like, how's... um. Now I I thought I heard possibly like are you, you did you record already did you record something new with them or yeah we got done? yep we got a new record out uh, almost out that is it's finished um, should be out you know hopefully before the year's over that's what I'm thinking nice what are we expecting from this album what are it's we uh, the El Nino sound but it's definitely heavier you know everyone likes mm. to say heavier, but it's definitely heavier. Um, I did a lot of solos on it, so that's that's different for El Nino. Um, wow. new, I think is awesome, man. You know, our, Marcos, our new singer, just has uh, more of a metal vibe. So uh, I think it, it's definitely just an all around heavy record, more of a metal record than ever in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can remember, like, if you go back to the records that you were on, that was like almost like a period in time where like solos weren't too, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't yeah. popular. You know. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a big fan of that era, you know, but, um, you know, it was what it was. And, and uh, um, that's that's really where I put a lot of my attention on on learning flamenco. You know, it's like, all right, nobody's in the metal and shred solos. And I'm going to just focus on learning how to play flamenco guitar. Yeah. Uh, so and that I incorporated on those early El Nino records. So I, I still had a great time. That's awesome. Oh, man, I'm excited to hear this. That's like something nice and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great, man. Good. Uh, so you're, you're saying you're going out on a solo tour, starting a solo tour. What's this about? Yeah. Like what, 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 what will the fans be expecting from you on this solo tour? So I basically, man, for like the last probably almost 15 years, I, I just do my solo gigs. Usually just on the weekends, I do fly in dates and, mm -hmm. uh, I go out and I, I play all the, the, the material off my solo records, which is like instrumental guitar stuff. Um, and uh and then i put some covers in but it's just me by myself i played like a backing track with bass and drums on like an ipod and jesus uh, no hey and then i do all my guitar on top of it and, and it just makes traveling just so so affordable you know and, and be able to just fly all over the place and play gigs by myself man so it's uh it's a lot of fun for me for me it's it's you know it's a it's just uh tons of fun where's the overhead there is none exactly. you know, that's it. Oh. I mean, people, people, you know, especially nowadays with, with how hard it is and expensive to tour, you know, I'm I'm just out there doing my thing, man. And and uh, like you said, there's no overhead. So it's great. That, that's fucking great, bro. That's like fucking. Uh, um, we talk we talk to a lot of comedians on this podcast and we, we use a comparison of like, man, we don't understand what you do because like in a band you could, you know, you fuck up like, you know, it gets covered up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A comedian, you're you're on the stage by yourself. Yeah. But but you going out solo with just a drum track and like, 
Hold on, let me start this up again. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, for me, it's fun because it's just nonstop guitar. And if something did get messed up with my iPod, yeah. that's cool. Cool guitar solo for, for a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so look, the longer I got a guitar in my hand, the happier I am. So like, yeah. it's fine. You know? That's okay. awesome. So talk about it, your, your last tour with El Nino. How is touring different now than it was 20 years ago? Oh, man. It's 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 definitely very different i think because the technology you know having a phone be able to, to video with people i mean i remember 20 years ago going to europe and you were just cut off from back home man like if you had a girl get about it you know what i mean like they would leave you two weeks into the tour because you could you could pay phone anywhere you know yeah you, yeah it, yeah. it, it was like you're just putting coins in and then you get cut off and and you know that would that be like maybe every other day every two days yeah, yeah. Uh, so so now it's it's a lot more easier to tour with all this technology and being able to message people and, and Wi-Fi and, and, and videos and stuff. It, it's it's just so much more easier because back in the day, it's like when you would go to Europe or South America, like you were, that's it. You were just like cut off from everything back home. You know, you'd be lucky if you can make a phone call every three days. Wow. What do you want from me? I'm in fucking Europe. What do you want? <laughs> like, I, I can't do anything. <laughs> but and, and then if, like if you had a girlfriend, like yeah. all you argue, you know what I'm saying? It was like find a phone and then they're screaming and you're like, you motherfucker, you know, and it's like pain, pain, argue, you know, I'm, I'm paying like 20 bucks a minute to argue with you. Can we keep it positive? <laughs> We're going to finish the argument in three days when I find a pay phone. <laughs> Rock, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't we see them at Birch Hill? Yes. That was so fucking hot and sweaty, that show. I, I just remember being so fucking hot. It was a great hot. show. That was a yeah. great show. Remember Bir Bir Birch Hill? Yeah. Yeah. Those shows were classic, man. You know, Birch Hill was a, uh, a legendary place. And that, that's really where El Nino, like we got our record deal that Roadrunner Records came out. Wow. And we were starting to pack clubs. And uh, I remember we headlined Birch Hill. And, and then from from there, we played Birch Hill like almost every weekend, you know. Mm -hmm. We uh, Rocco and I, we were in bands for years and we played uh, we, we played with uh, one of the last weekends. Birch Hill was open. For, mm. for for locals and stuff and we got to open for uh kitty and uh oh, yeah. and motor grader if you, do you remember motor grader yeah when ivan was singing from five yeah. finger death punk correct yeah. in fact there, there was a local band i don't know if you would know who they are so uh they were a good band they were called like like the mud box i think they were called yeah i remember yeah okay so i get a call from the promoter and like uh drummer got into a car accident you guys want to mm. open up the main stage Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what band were uh, you guys in? Uh, we were in a band called Lowdown. It was like a yeah. uh, like a rap rock band back in the day, cool. and and uh, we got to open up. And I remember the you know when the the screen starts to come up, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And they start cheering. I'm like, who the fuck are they cheering for? I don't even know who we are, <laughs> but I'm I'm going with it. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. So the. Uh, uh, I don't, you're not going to remember this, but the last time I saw you in person, uh, it was at Debonair Music Hall in okay. Teaneck, in Teaneck, and mm -hmm. we we were watching a clinic being put on by Bumblefoot. Oh uh, yeah, was it a clinic or was it? No, no, I'm just being smart yeah. about it because no. he's because he's that fucking good. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he's, I'm actually tomorrow I'm doing because I do videos uh, with my girlfriend. We do videos for bands in the area, and we fly mm -hmm. out. To we're actually doing some uh, some photos for for Bumblefoot's new band, Art of Anarchy. They're they're freaking amazing. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, I just remember. I know you were there, and uh, we were just watching him. Just I remember just, that. Just shaking your head, just like, yeah, yeah. He's amazing, man. He's he's just one of those next level shredders, you know. Yeah, and 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 to piggyback on that, he's just such a nice guy. Yeah, he's awesome, man. Very cool dude, man. Very yeah. cool dude. Yeah, his yep. name should his name should be Humblefoot. I think. <laughs> that's very, very humble foot. Yep. but uh <laughs> that's awesome man that, that, that's cool with the solo gig so you're you just keep going you just keep you go from your, your band to band like you're like you are one of the few or at least around in this area that we knew that actually you're making a living and smiling and 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 having a great fucking time in life i'm assuming you know i don't know but you know um, COVID was a rough last couple of years but uh but other than that I'm, I'm you know very grateful man it's been it's been a hell of a ride i mean i went from working construction to all of a sudden il nino got a record deal and i was just 
from that moment on, you know, it's, I've just been on a roller coaster of touring the world and, and like you said, making a living. And, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that because it's yeah. uh, a lot of fun. Now, it, was that your, that was like your initial like foot into the like the music industry like when then when el nino got a deal yeah when we got a record deal with roadrunner in like 2000 uh that was like my first record deal and i went from working a, a job to all of a sudden you know we were we were on the road and then we were doing Ozfest and we're going to europe and it just was unbelievable man it was just oh, like damn. six months like we were playing bird chill and then all of a sudden roadrunner offered us a deal we went into the studio and the next thing i knew we were on the road and and um you know one thing led to another then i joined Soulfly, and then 18 years flew by you know just insanity and i'm sure yeah you've talked about this shit so many times but you you're a big part of your career was with Soulfly, and yeah. then it that i'm 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 assuming that ended uh i don't know on good graces if it did but uh how did how are you with those guys is it just okay take care see you soon it, i mean it was, you know, the, the right thing wasn't done during COVID. They took out thousands of dollars in PPP loans, kept it just for themselves and their family. And that's what I said, I'm out of here, man. Oh, you know, okay. you're not going to cut me in on something like that. I said, I'm out, you know, so, so that's that. I hit, the, I was already on the road anyway, doing my solo project. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I don't need this, man. You know, I'd rather just do my solo thing, man. So I, I continued doing my solo thing and then I reconnected with El Nino around that time too. And, um, and then El Nino, we, you know, got right into the studio and then we hit the road also. So it's just been, uh, you know, no big deal, man. Water under the bridge. I just jumped yeah. on the next moving, you know? Yeah. I just can't see like fucking 18 years. It wasn't like you were, you know, like a year and a half, like, you know, hey, listen, you were a year and a half, like, take care, man. 18 years is a fucking career almost, you know, like. That's it. You're, when you when you gave two decades of your life and then something like COVID hits and and you don't do the right thing for for someone who's worked for you that long, that's when I just said I've had enough, you know, and I bailed. So, what was the reason behind it though? What was it? Just like all right, we're just gonna you know not include Mark in this or or like in, you know, basically, you know, basically that was it, you know. But there was a million other things that could that whole year we didn't do nothing, you know. There there was no money being generated for 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 uh, you know myself the crew for the 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 bass player in the band you know they're a family run business so they basically just kept everything for themselves and just shut down the entire shop which is fine i mean that, it's like if that's what you want to do that's fine but don't expect me to come back you know when things yeah. open up so i didn't good <laughs> good fuck them that yeah. makes I mean, <laughs> um i like to ask artists this question because i'm just interested on this the behind the scenes so like you do a, a song all right, so you, you worked with Soulfly. You, you you work with this band. You do solo. You you have your hands in, in, in into many projects. Are you like an are you like an LLC almost? Like like how how are you getting payments? <laughs> like and you don't have to go into like you know money, but I'm saying like how are you receiving your ro your royalties for everything? Yeah, uh, well, so so El Nino, yes, I, I would get my royalties from because everything was split fairly soulfly was not you know i just got paid out for making records and, and for touring basically oh, okay i am an llc now because you know after covid i during covid i was not and then i got wise to you know if i was an llc at the time i probably could have got some help um but now i am an yeah. llc solo project and yeah. um i basically you know I, I really make the bulk of my money just from going out and doing gigs you know that that's really uh you know and and that most Musicians do. I mean, most musicians aren't really on, on this level. The underground mm. metal type stuff. Yeah. Um, really, just you're making money going out on hitting the road and touring from show money, merch money. So, so yeah. So like, I heard a like an interview years ago with uh, Sonny from POD. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, yo, if I ain't touring, I ain't making money, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why the minute the minute um, I was able to hit the road in 2021, I hit all the states that were open. I was like, screw this, man. I was working a job doing like, you know, uh, home renovations with a buddy of mine. I was like, I was very grateful who, who hooked me up. But the minute I knew that states like Texas, Florida, Montana were allowing concerts, I hit all those places solo. And it was just me by myself with my iPod, you know, so I was able to uh, fly out by myself and have a low overhead. And I said, the hell with it, man. I'm, I'm doing this, man. I, I can't sit here at home anymore. I'm going crazy. Mm. So w t talk to me about the different mindset or if there if it even is a difference between playing by yourself with your iPad, iPod, iPad, and, or playing a festival, you know, 
in Europe for a hundred thousand people? Like, what's like? There has to be a difference. Yeah, I mean, there's there, there's definitely those big festivals that I've played over the years um, with El Nino and Soulfly. Um, you know, they're they're, they're definitely uh, there's an adrenaline rush. You know, there's no doubt about it. Oh. Um, but honestly, man, I, I I just I'm focusing on playing guitar, and I'm I'm really really um, so just like concentrating on what I'm playing that. To me, it doesn't matter if there's 20 people in the audience or there's 20,000 people, man. It, mm. It's uh, it, it's just all about what I'm playing on the guitar and me walking off stage knowing that I played to the best of my ability. Like I'm, I'm really very uh, just just concentrating on playing to the best of my ability. And I would rather play in front of 20 people knowing I had a great show than playing in front of 20,000 and I had a horrible show performance wise wise for myself. Yeah, it's weird, you know, because you would think like I'd be more amped up about playing the shows but um you know it's just more it's more about what i'm playing on the guitar that really matters mm. so i know obviously we never played to the caliber that you did but like we've played you know some pretty cool shows like the wellmont theater starland ballroom and then like when we played like a club that has like you know there's like seven people i'm like more nerd i'm like like a more <laughs> antsy with seven people in front of me than yeah. there is with 1200 you know yeah but yeah you know, at, at, at your at your stage, you know, you can play it at a fucking waitress and <laughs> playing guitar. Or it's it's really I, I'm to the point where I'm just I'm so wrapped up into the playing and playing to the best of my ability and hitting the right notes, you yeah. know, in in time that that's really what I try to focus on. That's the most important thing to me. Gotcha. Um, I work for a uh, a video production company, and uh, <laughs> today I put on Revenge Beast. Ooh. Hell yeah! Now, now, now we're talking about kids who listen to the 1975, <laughs> and they listen to uh, uh, Incubus, which nothing mm -hmm. wrong with those bands, sure. But I was like, ah, you know, we all put on. Hey, check this song out. Check this song out. I'm like, yo, check this song out. <laughs> A couple of them were like, ah. <laughs> I was like, bro, this is some fucking metal. Thanks. Yeah, this that sounds great. I I really I I'm enjoying this a lot, like Thank a lot, and I'm just uh, I knew that you came out with this, but I'm I'm just coming up to this now, man. And but I'm actually really enjoying it, and I'm loving how there's like that, this contrast of like this death death metal type of approach in a way, mm -hmm. but you would hear your like a solo, like you you like flip to the rhythm to the clean channel, and there's and you can hear the notes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But you're playing speed metal at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of death metal. You know, it's 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 influenced by bands like Carcass and uh, Death. And I, I've always been a huge death metal fan. I've always played in death metal bands growing up as a kid. And over the years, I've always wanted to do something um, like I did growing up, like, you know, in the early 90s and stuff. Um, and during the pandemic, I just, you know, some of my buddies that are in Revenge Beast, I was just I just hit them up and I was like, let's. Let's do this, man. Let's just start sending tracks back and forth since yeah. we're sitting at home doing nothing. Um, so we we wrote and recorded a whole record from home, uh, which is the first Revenge Beast record. And Upstate Records has uh, had offered us a deal, and they put the record out. So I'm I'm really proud of the record. It's it's really some of the heaviest stuff I've ever recorded. Yeah. Now is it something that like you said you always played in these bands and and, and love that kind of stuff? The actual finally be able to put out a recording like that 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 just it's different than the rest of your, your catalog, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, Soulfly, I brought a lot of death metal influence into that band when I joined. Um, but, but this is just like straight up brutal death metal. Like we're, we're not even trying to, uh, you know, even <laughs> think about like, like radio type song. <laughs> oh, no. It's just, I, it's just brutal death metal. And, and I really wanted to put something out like that. And, and, you know, sitting home during the pandemic, I, I was definitely in a pissed off mood, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> So it's a off record. There's no doubt about it. Revenge Beast is equivalent of running reds, giving fucking cops the finger. <laughs> like that's the equivalent of like where we are, like here and yep. listen to that shit. Yep. Um, when I hear solos like that that you have on of uh, I think I think it was like on the song called I Am, mm -hmm. and I did like the next one that I heard that Nomadic that was pretty dope, but uh, so I hear like chaos and f like it's frantic. But melodic and beautiful notes all mixed into one. Thank you. Is that like how am I is that like how your mind thinks with like even other things in life? 
like you're because your solos are so intense and you can hear the notes and then it, and then it does a run then it you know mm -hmm. the, the, a scale whatever the arpeggio the fucking what and but like how is your like does your mind are you that chaotic chaotic upstairs <laughs> if you know what i'm saying yeah i probably got some issues there's no doubt about it <laughs> <laughs> but uh the, the the funny thing about that record is that like i don't really know how to record honestly i'm not mm -hmm. good with uh, my bass player Brennan, he produced the record and engineered it, and so he knows how to do that stuff. But all my solos were done in one take, believe Jesus. it or not. I, I just it was all just improvised. I've never done that before. Like I, I I've touched upon that in records where yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. But the Revenge Beast record, I didn't have the option to punch and to construct the solos. So everything is just one take, improvised basically, and that's probably why it has that kind of chaotic. You know, I'm running through a scale, then I try to play slow and melodic because, like, I, I didn't have, you know, I had to come come up with this stuff live right off the cuff. So that's gotcha. probably why that vibe. But, I, but however you want to describe that method off the cuff or whatever, but that's what a listener's ear, though, that mm -hmm. at least someone like I can never play that, but I know what I'm hearing in a way. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I can, what a fucking great melody. And then it's like, Whoa, <laughs> that I heard that, and then it's like, uh, and I've always dug that when guitar players, you can hear like I know I think you're a fan of like 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 Zach Wall, right? Yeah. Zach Wall's fucking amazing. We all know this, but like there's there's times that he just you just hear <laughs> and, and he's going and he's going and he's going. And you're like, all right, it's pretty cool, it's good, it's good. But when when there's you know different types of uh, you know dynamics. Mm -hmm. you break down and I, I'm enjoying the melodies that you have that you're sp you know sprinkling in there. So I, I'm a fan Thanks. of that, man. Yeah, I, I try to play melodically. You know, I, I definitely try to. Uh, um, I, I and I love melodic death metal. Like a lot of death metal bands, when they do solos, it's a lot of dive bombs and whammy bar stuff. I I don't do any dive bomb whammy bar stuff at all. Um, so I really I really just try to think you know melodically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was um. Oh, so real quick, I'm curious to hear about this. Uh, you're a Dime fan, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we just uh, spoke about um, Zach Wild. What do you, what's your take on the new Pantera? Um, I would say new Pantera. The, 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 the lineup that they're going out with now, what is your take? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I love it. But but basically just because Zach Wild's part of it, you know. Okay. Um, I, the only reason why that for me at least and for other guitar players you know being that zach wild and dimebag were boys and like they were like the best of friends and, and they came from the same era of music and it had the kind of similar styles yeah i was waiting for years you know for this to happen because I, I know they were talking about it even when Vinny was alive um because zach is the only guy who could do it you know he's the only one that has the right i think to do this this pantera um yeah. we'll call it pantera you yeah. know i, I yeah. think that it, it, there's nobody else in the world that would make it authentic and make it cool like Zach does, you know, and, I, and I'm loving it, man, because I'm loving to hear Zach do his interpretation of the dime solos, you know, play, play the dime solos note for note, but then throw in the Zach wild uh, style. And yeah. I love, I love Zach's playing as much as I love dime. So I'm, I'm loving this, uh, this reunion that they're having. We, and we he's, talk he's doing it with nothing but respect to the dime. That's the other thing. I mean, it's, it's, He's doing it tastefully and and with full respect to Dimebag, and that's that's the only way you could do it. Yeah, I mean, if you go to you see any Black Label Society show, I mean, he pays tribute to Dime and or Vinny every single show. So, I think yeah. I think that you know I I was uh, obviously a big Pantera fan. Um, it, I agree with you hundred percent. You nailed the head. It, it it had to be him. It had to be. You know, if, you, be. if yep. you're only saying it's a it's a tribute and it's for the family, the brothers, and the friend, you know, and and the, the fans. It had to be him. Had to be him. That's it. I mean, there's nobody else that 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 could pull it off and, and do it tastefully, you know, out yeah. of respect. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, and be accepted by Pantera fans. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope they record new music, but I don't think they should call that it. era. They should call that maybe something different. Maybe call oh, it good. Mouth for War. You know, what I mean, something maybe, but not Pantera. Yeah. Ooh, I would love to hear them do some new music. So let's let's hope that they do. My my standout for me is Charlie. He yeah. is a fucking phenomenal on this yeah. tour. 
he's he's incredible man i mean he's he's one of the top drummers you know in thrash metal man he's uh i think very underrated i, I think the drummers out there they know how good he is but i don't think people really realize how amazing you know and influential he was to all, all the thrash metal drummers over the years oh yeah oh yeah i agree with you arch i, I think he's like the mvp so far yeah yeah yep. because because everybody kind of knew that like you know we're probably going to get Zach to do this, but n I mean, I never heard of any rumor about who's going to play drums. Yep. And and then when you heard him, you were like, "Oh, okay." And he yeah, I'm glad it. they went. They went with someone from that era. You know? Yeah, yeah. And he just fought. He's fucking slaying it. Yep. <laughs> um. About. I, I gotta say though, Phil sounded good though. Now, man, he, he he sounds better than he did than he did 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Well, I think he, uh, from what I heard, he quit drinking, and you know, he's he's got a very positive, uh, you know, yeah, I no, tune. No Great. shoes, no shoes on. He's okay. He's doing good. <laughs> you, you see him? He's like, play, did he always play with like no shoes, or did this is just like a new thing? I think it's new. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Phil. Yep. Um, two around 2015, I had the pleasure with another band of mine. A band was called Empire Fallen. Yeah. And and uh, we were recording with a mutual friend of ours, uh, Derek Klybash. Okay, yeah. yeah so I, I, yes. And I think it's important to keep people's name alive. Um, sure. And I, I know he passed suddenly. And what a fucking musician. I yep. mean, you know, he, 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 was, he was with us and he recorded an EP for us and we enjoyed that time. And he would, and he would come in and be like, "Ah, oh, why don't you play this?" And he's like, "No, no, no, no." And I'm like, "All right, Derek, thank you." Yeah, you know, Derek was one of my best buds, man. Super talented dude. He recorded uh, most of my solo stuff. He played bass in my solo band. Um, you know, we were best buds for years, man. I took him out on the road with me with my solo project. He was uh, he guitar tech for me in Soulfly for a little bit. Um, I loved his old band, Hello Eden, which is when right. I first. Great. Amazing. That that one record that they had yep. so good yeah he he was uh you know i would call him a new jersey legend you know i mean he he uh was incredible and i miss him you know and it, it sucks that uh you know that he he passed on man you know and yeah uh, yeah i always you know got, i got nothing but great memories of you know, me derek getting in trouble all over the world on <laughs> he, he was, was always, uh, always fun to be around at shows he was wild man he me and him would we would go out and and he just you know, I, he, he would find just things to do, you know, at three o'clock in the morning and countries, you know, just just I won't go too into detail. But one time we were in Eve, right in Israel, we did Ozfest with Soulfly and Derek was with me. And, and it, like we had a we had to fly home at like six in the morning. The show just ended at like 10, 11 or something. And Derek's like. Man, we're gonna find we're gonna find a strip club. I'm like, we're, we're in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv. Or, you know, I'm like, there's no strip clubs here. He's like, I'm going to find one. Derek found the strip club and we went <laughs> and we, <laughs> we all nighter and uh, we, we were just, a, you know, a mess when we got on the plane at like six in the morning and fly home. Uh, but uh, it was an epic evening and it was just another day with Derek, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that memory you have to hang out to. That's all. Yeah, yep. thanks. I, I'm glad that you share some good words because I, I wanted to. I know that we we both mutually know him, so I, I wanted to get that out. Um awesome. There, there, there's this one rock. There's this one story. So I'm recording with Derek and Derek is like, oh, this is a good part right here. Um, I just want to add this little solo. I think you should add a solo right here. Just you know, a couple bars. And I'm like, OK, he's like, want try a couple things. So he actually left for like, you know, maybe 15 minutes and I'm working on stuff. He comes back in. And he goes, oh, by the way, Rizzo's come. Mark Rizzo stopping by. And I go, why the fuck is he coming by? Why, why can't he come by when we're tracking drums? <laughs> <laughs> like 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 a fucking a guitar guy like this is coming by when I'm playing. Uh, I I you walk in you you know you're like hey you're very nice hey what's up man what's up oh what are you working on Empire Fall and this and that whatever and he's like uh, Derek's like do a take and I'm like you fuck <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I'm like playing like ah god this is fucking horrible but uh, it it was just a funny story and uh, he was a uh, yeah he was a good guy and and I and I I actually the last time watching him was in 40 below summer too playing yeah. bass playing bass with them yeah well him him and and uh my drummer anthony divizio 
Derek and Anthony, they started playing with 40 below summer then. And, and, um, and they were killing it. You know, they were 40 below summer. They're still doing great, you know, but that yeah. was a good up with Derek playing bass and, and those guys, man. And, uh, I think they got a new record coming out too. So. Yes. Yes. Uh, did, I don't know. I just thought of this for some reason. Um, did, did you, or did you not re rehearse at streets in street in, in Patterson Clifton Yeah, by, Clifton. by, by, by connections? Yeah, of course, from Connections. Yeah, I did. I was there from like 2003 to about 2007 because the guys that used to play my solo band at that time uh, had a band called, uh, what were they called? I forgot. But it's, drummer's name was Teddy Gibbons. and, and Teddy. 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 Teddy, what a great. One Lump Sum? No. Yeah. Some, yeah. yeah I, used to, I used to rehearse in their room. That's what it was. One Lump Sum's room. Yep. Pons. Fonz was the singer or something. Yeah. Fonzo and Adam. Yes, um, Adam. Yeah. Yep. Teddy, but, great drummer. Yeah, I used to jam with Teddy because he recorded on my first solo record. And right. um and then I would I shared that room with them for a couple, you know, maybe two, three years or something like that. So yeah, I was there for a bit. We were there. Yes, we were there at that time. And I do yeah. remember and I think my my chem, chem was there too, for some reason. They, they might have been there for a little bit, but that's that's cool. Um mm -hmm. so sorry, so what do what what do we got going on? We got we got a solo tour starting up next. What 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 do we see in the future from Mr. Rizzo? Where the fuck are we going, son? Where are we I'm going? going? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm leaving Friday. Uh, well, tomorrow we're doing this this video shoot with uh uh with Bumblefoot's new band, which I'm excited for. So that's just something I do on the side with my girl. We got a, a video production company, CSMY Production. If anybody. Needs any video work? Although you said you work for a video company too, right? <laughs> All good. Uh, yes. Right. On. So we're doing that, and then Friday early, I'm flying to Vegas. I got a solo gig in Vegas, then LA, somewhere in Northern Cal California, and then Idaho, and then I'll fly home. So I'm gonna be gone for about a week, um, and then I just got I just do these flying dates with my solo project, you know. Um, so I got that, and then I'm doing some local things too. August 27th. Oh, I got this other side project. August 27th. <laughs> I'm playing with my project Acoustic Vendetta. And we just go out, we just play around Northern Jersey. We just play acoustic rock, classic rock. But we do have some originals and we're about uh -huh. to release the record soon. It's really cool stuff, man. It's kind of okay. like out and it's just two acoustic guitars, percussion, and we just uh just play some classic rock type stuff. So August 27th, I'm playing with Acoustic Vendetta at uh Blue Arrow Farm, which is by Warwick, New York. It's a pretty okay. cool sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then I just got I just got some flying dates on the weekends. I got something I think in Wisconsin. Um, I got something in Kentucky. Uh, everybody could just follow my social media. I'm always putting up my my tour dates. Yeah, um, where can everybody follow you? Uh, any any Facebook, Instagram. I'm on TikTok now. So all that's YouTube. I do a lot of my live videos on YouTube and, and TikTok. Um, but yeah, all the social media, I'm on all that stuff. And then uh, October, El Nino is doing a tour with uh, Devil Driver. So most of October, I'll be on the road with, with El Nino. So mm. remember the times where all you had to do was play guitar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of booking now, you know, now it's just me booking my own project, you know, and it's I, hard to. I, I, I was going to ask. Like, yeah. are you are you physically like, hey, it's Mar like, I'm sure you got connections all over the country. Like, are you like, hey, Johnny? Yeah. Can I come yeah. In? Yep. It's a, it's a little bit of me. It's a little bit of um, some friends of mine. You know, just I try to just get as, you know, keep at least keep my weekends book solid, you know. Um, so between myself and then people that that help me out. We're pretty busy. That's awesome. Yep. Down, Ben. I'm, I'm tired here in your schedule. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Making me tired. <laughs> I'm not busy enough, man. I, I, the guys that complain about being on the road, like I don't get it, man. It's, for me, it's 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 a paid vacation, man. You know, there's nothing to complain about. Sure. You go out, you get to do what you love, have some mm -hmm. food, mm -hmm. see some people who are, who enjoy what you do. Yep. And then you fuck off and you go back. You go to the next day. Paid vacation, man. It's fun to, to, to play guitar. I'm, I'm very lucky, man. And that's awesome. what, that's what we'll end it off on. That's a great. I uh, I I commend you, and I, I I think that's awesome. And I'm very happy for you. And you're you're a local dude, from New Thank Jersey. You. And uh, good luck with everything. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see you around, man. And cool. we really appreciate the time. 
Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it, man. Keep in touch, man. We'll hang. Absolutely, Stay brother. Stay well, brother. Have All a right. great day. Thank you. The great Mark Rizzo. Be good. Later. Yeah, he's, he's, he seems like uh, a, a guy like you. He's like, he's like you where he can't sit still, yeah. right? He's got to be doing something, except uh, he's got guitar skill. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, to be honest, he's <laughs> just like you. Except one thing. <laughs> Except one thing. The guitar aspect. Wow. <laughs> that's fantastic. No, that that's, I mean, like, I know you don't play guitar, but you, you, we, we play in a band. But, like, if, and, and again, like I said to him, I, I can't play a lick, no pun intended, of what he plays. But I can hear, like, I can hear what he's playing. Yeah. And I'm like, <sighs> there's people who play guitar. And then there's people who own the guitar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like I get uh I can cook, right? But I can't make the shit that fucking Gordon Ramsay makes. But when I see it or I taste it, I'm like, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I hear you. So give him a follow, everybody out there, and uh check out his fucking dates, check out his music, his solo project, Revenge Beast, Il Nino, the Nino. Uh check out all his stuff. I mean, guy puts on a clinic every time. Literally. <laughs> if you just heard us talking to NJ's own Mark Rizzo, you can spit lyrics like Jay-Z, H to the Izzo. You drank so much beer, you gotta go take a fizzo, and you know it's about damn time like Lizzo? Then you just listen to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. <laughs> we out! If you guess her, well, don't step on my line ever, ever fucking do that. If you just heard us talking at noon, <laughs> and you know it's about that 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 thing. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I missed you. <laughs>